just came home from work, and tonight we're going to make cedar plank salmon. So there's um, it's, it's a simple recipe. It's uh, pretty easy to do, but uh, we're just going to go over a few things that you would need to have in order to make cedar plank salmon. So we're going to use the Weber kettle grill, um, which I don't know if you have one, but if you do, this is great. Otherwise, you could use a regular grill for this, but we're going to use charcoal, which is a great way to make this taste. Generally, I would uh, add some soaked wood chips to uh, make any kind of um, food on the kettle grill, but because we're going to use a cedar plank, that's going to be the wood chips. It's going to be soaked in water and then smoked. I'll show it to you. Come over here. This is the cedar plank that the uh, salmon is going to get smoked on. So first, it, I got this at um, one of the uh, big box club stores, and um, I bought a whole bunch of them, maybe like 10 for $10. And they last a, a good amount of time. Generally, we probably do it five or six times a year, and they come in 10 packs, so it's, uh, it's, it, it lasts a year or two. I take it, and I put it in this pan, which happens to be an old drip pan from one of my grills, and I'm just put, weighted it down with a few rocks, and it's going to be in some water, and it'll get wet, and then when we put it over the charcoal, it'll begin to smolder and smoke with the fish on top, and it'll give it a really nice cedar taste. So the um, <clears throat> things we're going to use, so we have the kettle grill. Inside the kettle Weber grill is, uh, these are handy, these are called charcoal holders, they're about $15. I've had them for years, it's really no big deal. I don't think you really need them. You could pile your charcoal on either side of the grill, what we're going to do is we're going to put the charcoal on these sides, and then we'll put the, uh, the top on, and then we'll grill the fish on the plank in the middle of the grill. But, um, <clears throat> The reason for these is, one, to hold the charcoal, and two, because I use lump charcoal, which is here. It's not briquettes. It's, uh, it's a little bit, there's no chemicals. It's pretty pure, and it's, uh, there's a lot of small pieces. So if you didn't have the holders, I think it would probably fall through the grate onto the deck and burn the deck, which would be annoying. So obviously you don't want that. Also, in order to start the charcoal, we're going to use a uh, chimney starter. <laughs> This uh, I've had for years, as you can see, this has been used like a thousand times, and it's really easy and efficient, and you could, generally you would stick newspaper in the bottom and just light the newspaper and it would go and fill this up with charcoal, and I should also mention that if you have a Weber grill, uh, a kettle grill, if you fill this up with charcoal and dump half into this charcoal holder and half into this charcoal holder and cover the grill with the, with the vents open, the temperature of the grill on the inside will be 350 degrees pretty consistently for about an hour, which is handy to know. So, because I don't have any newspaper, I got an iPad, so we don't get the newspaper delivered anymore every day. We're going to use some fire starters, um, which are sp specifically made not to have any sort of flavor or give the charcoal or the food any sort of chemical taste. So these fire starters light right up and it's real easy. We'll just get them going. And then I'll put the charcoal over the fire starters. Alternatively, you can just stuff newspaper in the bottom. Equally as easy. And this thing is going to take care of itself. Okay, coals are about ready. So I'm going to dump them into the coal holders. Pretty hot. It's really hot. Pretty good. We have farm-raised salmon. Uh, we got it at Whole Foods. I'm going to take the cedar plank out of the water. It's been soaking for about half an hour. It's pretty wet. I probably could have left it in another 15 or 20 minutes uh, to make sure it was really wet and going to smolder. But just to make sure nothing sticks to it, even though the fish has some skin on it, I'm just going to put a little spray oil to be sure that the salmon doesn't stick too badly to the plank. I'm going to take this nice fresh piece of salmon, um, which fits pretty well right on the cedar plank. And it looks really good. Here's what's going on. So this is low fat, low salt Cajun seasoning, which is a really great thing to just buy. Um, I can make it, but I don't think I can make it any better than the store can, and it's only about two dollars a container. So we're gonna give the salmon a nice healthy dose of that, a little bit more, to make sure we've got it everywhere. Rub it in slightly. And these are the things that are going to go on top. We're going to have some lemon, which are uh, really thin lemon slices that I just cut, and they're just almost going to melt into the fish. And then on top of the 
lemon. I cut a bunch of slices of butter. And the butter is going to add richness to the salmon. Not super healthy, but it's okay. It's going to be good. Okay, so if you could come around this way. So the wet cedar board is ready to go. The salmon is ready to go. The fire is pretty hot. We know it's going to be about 350 degrees inside the grill. So we're going to stick the salmon on and we're going to cover the grill and we're going to set the timer and based on that piece of salmon which is reasonably thick I'm going to cook it 28 minutes and I should get between medium rare and medium. So the salmon's been on for about 10 minutes. As you can see, I don't know if you can catch it on film, but uh, there is smoke billowing out of the Weber which is the cedar plank smoldering. And while I was waiting around, I picked a few things from the garden which needed to be com needed to come out, which are ripe. So these are a ton of tomatoes. Those are standard, uh, they're called 4th of July tomatoes. And these are dark grape tomatoes, which uh, actually are bred so that you can put them into the refrigerator and they taste good. Generally, when you put tomatoes in the refrigerator, they taste terrible. These tomatoes are tie-dye tomatoes, so when you slice them open, they uh, look like a tie-dye t-shirt, and then I had a few red serrano uh, chilies that were on the vine, and they needed to come off right away because they had turned red, and once they turn red, then they're going to be overdone pretty soon. Best to pick them while they're green. And then, of course, here's another just zucchini. Earlier in the vlog, you might have saw that giant zucchini I picked out, which really wasn't very good because when you let it get that big, the skin is very tough. Sun's setting in New Jersey. Not bad. It's a nice night. Crickets are cricketing. There's the garden. And the salmon's about done. So, uh, salmon's been on for 28 and a half minutes, and we're about to call it. I haven't really opened up the uh, grill since we started cooking, so I don't know what it's going to look like, but here we go. Whoa. That looks pretty good to me. I don't know, if you like, if you're a salmon fan, and you could smell this, what you would smell is a whole lot of cedar smoke. And it looks really good. Looks like it's about done. I don't want to overcook it. So, I'm going to use a spatula. The whole plank comes off the grill. Uh, I'm going to put it on a cutting board because I don't see any other way to take it upstairs. And we'll go up and see how we did. Here's the big test. It looked good coming off the grill. It should be, oh, we got it, a good medium rare.